Thank you for joining Cancer Support Community Atlanta for the Tell Me More series. This program focuses on radiation therapy and is led by Dr. Mudit Chowdhury with Northside Radiation Oncology Consultants. For more information on other installments of the Tell Me More series, please visit Cancer Support Community Atlanta's website, cscatlanta.org. Hi, my name is Dr. Mudit Chaudhary. I'm a physician at Northside Radiation Oncology Consultants in Atlanta, Georgia, and I'm here alongside our partners, Cancer Support Community Atlanta, to discuss uh, our topic that's called, So You've Been Told You Need Radiation Therapy. Here's just a little background about Cancer Support Community Atlanta. They offer free virtual oncology support programs led by professionals. Um, some of these include support groups for patients and their caregivers, stress reduction class, nutrition seminars, and education programs. And here's their link if you'd like some additional information about these or if you'd like to register. Just a little bit of background about me. Um, I'm a Georgia native and uh, I'm proud to be back here after training and uh, giving care to the community. Just a brief overview of what we're going to discuss. We'll go through an introduction of what radiotherapy is, what's the process and workflow that you may experience, and then what are some side effects that you may be able to expect and how we address them um, to, to minimize the side effects for you. So usually people think that, you know, with radiation therapy, they may, you know, be melting or that they may become very radioactive. Um, but in fact, this is far from the, the reality. And so the way I think about radiotherapy is it's one of the main pillars of cancer cares alongside, you know, surgery, chemotherapy, um, targeted agents, and immunotherapy. It's a very highly effective treatment for cancer patients. Two-thirds of all patients will receive radiotherapy for either curative intent or potentially for palliation of symptoms. We're able to treat cancers from head to toe, from brain, head and neck, breast cancer, lung cancer, you know, GI, prostate, and, and so on and so forth. And in fact, we can also treat a wide variety of benign diseases as well. In fact, one third of all treatments in Germany are for non-cancerous indications. So brief overview, this, is, this technology has been around for a really long time. We've just been able to refine it significantly over the past 100 years or so, and to the point where you know, it went from really primitive x-rays to now we're able to de de deliver highly conformal, high-dose radiation therapy just to cancer itself. There are many different types of radiotherapy. Um, the most common one that you may experience is uh, of what we call external beam radiotherapy in the form of photons, which means that it's a machine that's delivering uh, energy uh, from outside your body in, in directly into the cancer. Sometimes we use other particles, whether it's electrons or protons, but for the vast majority, it's, it's photons. There's also internal localized radiation therapy in the form of what's, what's known as brachytherapy, you may have heard of it as either seeds or, or needles, et cetera, um, that's used for predominantly cervical cancer, prostate cancer, sometimes eye cancer. And there's a form of radiation called radiopharmaceuticals, uh, which is where you are injected with radioactive uh, material and it goes throughout your bloodstream and it delivers the radioactive material to uh, sites of cancer. And so I call that more like systemic radiation therapy. So how does it really work? So RT damages the DNA within cancer cells, which destroys the ability of reproducing uh, cells. Uh, it disrupts their reproduction and leads to cell death. When the damaged cells are destroyed by radiation therapy, the body naturally eliminates them. And normal cells can be affected by radiation, but they can repair themselves in a way that cancer cells cannot. And so you can see here, um, when we're treating you with what we call daily fractions, your, your normal tissue cells, each day they take a little bit of a hit, but then they bounce back. And while cancer cells, as indicated in the 
the pink purple line, each time they take a hit, they have a harder and harder time to be able to survive. And so over time, with those daily treatments, you know, they're unable to repair themselves. So modern radiation therapy, I like to think of it as it's very precise. Uh, it's very accurate. We have onboard imaging to help guide us. We're able to deliver high doses to tumors and low doses to normal tissues. When you hear of a prescription, a normal prescription that you may uh, receive, that's is really broken down into you know what dose you're getting, what fractionation scheme you're going to undergo, the technique that you're going to receive, and the location of your body that this is going to happen. And so by dose, we mean what is the total amount of radiation therapy that's going to be given. The fractionation really means how many treatments given to reach that prescribed dose. The technique is really referring on our end to the planning style we use to achieve those goals. And then the location is you know, exactly where in the body we're going to be treating. Just a quick overview of what these techniques are. So radiation started in this two-dimensional era when we used to use chalk to, to draw out the areas we want treated with the x-rays, use physical lead cutouts to then actually accomplish this goal. We then later developed you know, CT-based planning, uh, which is called 3D conformal radiotherapy. This used a CT scan to create a three-dimensional picture of the tumor and the surrounding anatomy. The number uh, and angle of the beams were then chosen by the, the radiation oncologist to conform to a target, which allowed for improved precision and decreased normal tissue damage. Now, more recently, uh, we've adopted a technique called intensity modulated radiotherapy. It's a highly sophisticated form of 3D conformal RT in, in which we utilize computer software to choose the appropriate number and beam angles required to safely deliver the specific RT dose that is required. We use on the top right, you can see that there are these multi-leaf collimators within the machine that are constantly moving, which allows us to dynamically modulate the dose intensity around the desired shape. And you can see here on the bottom right um, that you can really carve that radiation to, to fit the tumor and miss the normal structures. Like in this example, you can see the spinal cord is now and the parotid glands are being significantly spared compared to on the left picture. This is an example again of a, a similar, uh, of a case of 3D conformal radiation therapy of like a rectal cancer field on the left. You can see the, the light blue line is our target here. And we're able to, with 3D conformal, really accurately target that area uh, but there is some uh, low dose spread into the surrounding areas like your bladder and your femoral heads in this example. But when you use that IMRT technology, you can see now that light blue target is really tightly hugged by the radiation dose. And so now you're seeing that the healthy tissue uh, is experiencing a significantly lower amount of radiation therapy exposure. There's also a type of radiation that you may have heard of called stereotactic radiation therapy. Um, this is where we deliver an extremely high dose to a very specific target. It also uses IMRT planning, but with a very narrow dose. And so, you know, you can see the yellow line is the, the radiation that's coming out uh, of the, the machine. And with SRS, we really, what I consider of it is closing the shutters in the machine. And so this allows us to really narrow that beam and, and come out and, and deliver such high doses just to the tumor itself. When it's within the brain or spinal cord, we call this stereotactic radiosurgery. Anywhere else in the body, it's called stereotactic body radiotherapy, or SBRT for short. Um, and some places call it SABRE, um, but that's ultimately what that means. This is an example of you know, stereotactic radiation case um, for a brain lesion. You can see here it's on the on, outlined by the blue. This is the area where we're trying to target. 
And this is the actual dose distribution around that target. So you can see it's it's really, really conformal around that area. And the healthy brain is receiving very, very little dose at all, uh, which allows us to significantly reduce the side effects while maintaining our efficacy. So a common prescription that you may hear um, is 20 gray in five fractions using 3D conformal radiotherapy. So the process and workflow um, that you may experience as a patient, and, and so I'll go for step by step. Um, so the initial part is you'll see a physician in consultation. We'll determine if you're a good candidate for radiotherapy. You'll then undergo what we call a CT simulation or a planning session. This is where we'll take a special CAT scan with you laying in the treatment position, and we'll use specialized immobilization for the area of interest. For example, you can see here uh, with a lung lesion, you can see that where our special CAT scan is able to record the entire um, breathing cycle of a patient. And so that way we can track the tumor throughout your entire, whenever you're laying on the machine exactly. We'll then create an actual radiotherapy plan on the while you're at home. And so the creation of the plan, you know, we will fuse other scans that you may have gotten, like a PET CT that's seen here, you can see, uh, or sometimes an MRI. Uh, during the plan, we identify the cancer, we'll identify healthy organs, and we'll arrange the beams in a way to maximize dose to that cancer and, and minimize dose to healthy structures. Again, here you can see that same case that I'm describing uh, with the beams on and, and the dose distribution. Again, it's very highly accurate, highly conformal to that target. And you can see the surrounding structures here, like the spinal cord in green, um, your aorta in, in yellow, your pulmonary arteries and veins. You can see they're receiving almost zero dose at all, um, even with the low dose being shown. Um, so that's allowed us to, again, significantly you know, improve your outcomes for you and, and minimize the side effects. The next step in our process is we have quality assurance. And this is where we undergo peer review uh, amongst each other to make sure that what we've done is appropriate. We critique each other uh, in order to make sure the patient is getting the best care possible. Our physics team then tests the accuracy of the delivery uh, by using special phantoms that can mimic the human body and, and make sure that everything is safe before we ever bring you back in. And then finally, after all that is done, we actually turn the, the beam on and begin your treatment for you. Now, so the side effect profile of this is, you know, typically localized to the area that we are treating. With the one exception being, I'd say fatigue is the most common systemic side effect. You can see here when when we break it down by disease site, your side effects really vary based on where those organs really are. So for example, in the for breast cancer, we really just notice like skin, skin redness or swelling. Sometimes your skin can get a little darker or lighter. Uh, in contrast, if we're treating like your, your abdomen, you may notice some nausea, vomiting, or diarrhea. While in the pelt, you know, while in the the head and neck area, you may notice like some loss of taste, dry mouth, mucositis. It really just varies based on the body location. But most of the side effects that you see that we've discussed here, they begin in the second to third week of treatment. And they typically resolve within a few weeks after your final treatment. Don't worry, we're gonna monitor you throughout your treatments. We have weekly on-treatment visits to be able to check in and, and address any of these side effects that you may be going. And what I really like to emphasize to my patients is please share what you're feeling. Um, and this is a slide that I borrowed um, from one of my uh, colleagues. Her name is Jill Feldman. She's a great patient advocate. And so you know, she made this slide where she says, you know, you look at this picture 
And this is how my care team and others perceive I feel while I'm on therapy. Um, you know, but this is actually how I feel. You know, I, there's days where I might have severe dry eyes or some mouth sores or some joint pain, numbness and pain at surgical sites, you know, dry mouth, et cetera. Um, and so it's really crucial for you to, to tell us how you're doing. So that way, you know, we can try to help to the best of our ability. Um, you don't have to suffer in silence by any means when you're with us. And ultimately, you know, one of the things I like to say is what, you know, physicians tell you is tolerable, you know, it's relative, like ultimately, you know, we want to respect how you're feeling and, and really do, do right by you. We do try our best to mitigate some of these side effects that we've discussed. Um, so certain things that we may do, for example, is um, use prophylactic ointments. Um, so there's been several studies that have shown that using like a prophylactic steroid cream can help reduce, you know, the skin side effects of breast cancer tre radiation treatment. So I prescribe this to all of my patients. Um, recently, there was another study that looked at using this Mepitel film um, throughout your radiation treatment and that also significantly reduced uh, the skin side effects, the dermatitis from the radiation therapy. So that's another avenue for some patients. Sometimes we'll prescribe prophylactic medications, you know, whether it's anti-nausea pills, anti-heartburn uh, pills, you know, et cetera. Also, we'll always try to encourage my patients to uh, pursue some exercise uh, to the best of their, that their body allows them to. You know, and there's been lots of studies on this and, you know, doesn't really matter what type of exercise, you know, there's positive results seen with either it's yoga or, you know, aerobic, any aerobic exercises, resistance training, really just want you uh, to try to move to the best of your ability. And I think this is where, you know, the cancer support community resources really um, play a great part with, with what they can offer patients. Uh, in addition, like whether not only just exercise, but also, you know, dietary and, and medicate, meditation classes, et cetera. I also try to incorporate advanced planning techniques um, whenever possible into your care, whether it's using like the IMRT that we discussed and um, or SRS or SBRT and, you know, these, these more advanced techniques have, again, in, in multiple disease sites and multiple randomized control trials been shown to significantly reduce those side effects and uh, occasionally avoid organs to the best of our ability. And so that's it for us. This is our practice information, um, my email, phone number, you know, and website. If you have any questions, please feel free to, to reach out. Um, and I want to just thank you for taking the time to, to listen to us today. Thanks so much. Thank you for watching this installment of the Tell Me More series. We invite you to visit csceatlanta.org to learn more about the virtual and in-person oncology programs available through Cancer Support Community Atlanta.